I mean, what was it like your first time on stage? Were you nervous? Oh, it's a, yeah. <clears throat> the first time, no, I was really, I'm more nervous now than what I was back then. It was, <clears throat> it was such a buzz, such a buzz. And then you see all these people singing, and I'll never forget this little girl smiling at me, and it just gave me so much joy. It was making people laugh and giving them memories. It was great. And I'm having fun. You know, it's every kid's dream, you know, you have a hairbrush in your, your bathroom, in your bedroom. Yeah, you go, sure you oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, and there I am doing it, and it was amazing. It was just, it was just unbelievable. I mean, to come from where I come from, and, and I, I did it on my own, because, you know, Tash and Liz, they had the parents, I really did it all by myself. Well done. You know, and I'm so proud of it. You know, looking back on it now, as I'm saying, it's like, I really did it. I remember when we got the record deal. I remember ringing my mum, she was absolutely shit-faced, and then Tash and Liz, and I thought, oh, fuck it, you know. I got a record deal, you know, and I celebrated it with the girls. Were you doing drugs at the time? At the... God, yeah. Not, not, all, not all the time. Like, I was doing drugs loads of times, but not all the way through, if that makes sense. The drugs really for me was when I moved back to England when I split up with Brian. That's when the drugs, like in Atomic Kitten, there was, people say like, there's loads of drugs. That I never really experienced that side of it. I got my drugs from Warrington. <laughs> You know, I, I I can't say that I weren't doing drugs like with these celebrities because that never happened. And I never experienced any of that because you're so busy working, you're so controlled by the record company, you, you, you have no downtime. So my downtime was when I came home with my mum and got off my head then. So it was never in the industry. So people say, oh, the industry fucks you up, you know, it's all drugs. I thought, no fucker offered me any free drugs when I was in Atomic Kitten. I'd pay for all my, I would have gone home. <laughs> <laughs> Cost me fortune. <laughs> what was it like sliding into the celebrity life then at such a young age? Because you were when you joined Atomic Kitten. How Seventeen. Old you? Seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, the other two girls were quite nervous and a bit more laid back. Where I was very loud and bold. And I remember seeing Tom Jones and uh, never met him before in my life. And I went, Tom. We were doing Pepsi chart shows together. And he went, Oh, it's Atomic Kitten. I went, Catch me. He went, What? I said, Catch me. And he just went. And I ran up to him and jumped on him. Hey, funny enough, he liked me after that. <laughs> I think because in my eyes, they were never no different to me. I think I get more starstruck now um, than, I mean, yesterday I was at the football with James Carden. I'm like, oh my God, so James Carden is stale. It's amazing. Yeah, but back then when I was younger, I think you just, you just have more energy about you, don't you? You have more... Less fear. I, it's like, I know where I've come from and I'll never change. I'm down to earth. I, you're no different than me. I'm no different than you. We all fart shit and burp. Although, because I'm a C-list and my farts do smell a little bit nicer, <laughs> I have to say. Um, but I've never, and I think you've got no right to talk to me like a piece of shit because I'm not. And there was a bit of a change. You see you see these celebrities talking to makeup artists and runners. I think, you know, and I think that's why I've still got a career because I've always been nice to everybody. Well, that's what's interesting about you is how you've kept your ego in check because people get fame and it goes oh I've got heads. imposter syndrome massively <laughs> imposter syndrome oh my god like we're in the papers today because we're at West Ham and we're there with James Conner like, oh my god can you go can we oh my god can we meet the picture with James Conner oh my god you know and it's like I forget that I've been around for a million one years and I, I forget that but I'm so grateful I'm so blessed I'm so appreciative <laughs> And when I get tasked to, to do these reality shows, it's not about them. I think, what a great memory. When I lie on my deathbed, I'm going to go, wow, I did that. I'd rather have a regret doing it and thinking, fuck, this is hard, than have a regret not giving it a go. Like doing SAS, the jungle, and all that kind of shit. I, I gave it a go. Yeah, so, isn't that awesome? So in, in the beginning, people coming up to you, recognising you. Hated it. Hated that it. Messed my, that messed my head up. Did you? you mess, no, that, back <laughs> then, back then it really messed my head up. I, that's why I had to start having a drink before I went out. Right. So you never got a break from, when you're in a girl band, it's really hard work. People don't understand, you don't have any sleep. I remember we did it at South East Age Door. We all ended up in hospital on trips. So we're doing the big breakfast and we were Johnny's Angels. So we're on telly every day. It was on for a week. And then we don't get to see the other side of it because you, you're there, hotel, performance, photo shoot. You don't get to mingle. Or you, you know, it's work, work, work. And I remember we had like a couple of days off. And I finally got to go home. I was like, oh, come on, let's go out. Like he always used to. And I went in the world. 
And my God, I had two drinks, went on, went never again. I had people go, oh my God, I know your dad's a D, because I don't. <laughs> oh, I know your sister. That's funny, I'm an only child. You know, oh, she slept with my boyfriend. Have you seen fucking state of you? Why would I sleep with him? And look at you, do you know what I mean? It was, it was so messed up on people. And the way they, I, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. Did your friends think, start to behave differently towards yeah, you as well? Yeah, I'll never forget my, my ex-boyfriend, Carl. We're still really good friends. I remember we got all these free CDs from uh, Virgin Records. And he's like, well, let me borrow them. I said, I said, you can do it. I said, but let me listen to them first. And then, oh, oh you've changed. Because I won't let you borrow until I've listened to them. If I'd have bought these and I wasn't who I am now, I'd say the same thing. So you see people changing differently. I had so many anglers on, and that 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 was awful. Have you had, people have you... asking for money. Oh God, yeah, everybody. I spent. I I buy. I bought people's love and affection. That was my mistake. I was buying everybody, including my mum's. Everybody, I bought everybody's love. It, it was to prove that I hadn't changed. And that's why I was doing drugs. Oh, yeah, let's get some coke, because I've not changed. Down to earth. Yeah, I'm down to earth. I'm still me. Do you know what I mean? It's really, yeah. Have right. you got friends from childhood who've stuck with you and nope. been completely normal? Not one. No. None of them. Apart from Dawn and Leslie, who uh, my mum's friends, but yeah. they're my friends. But no, not one I of them. That's no. sad. But yeah. it's sad, isn't it? Not one yeah. person. My my friends as Ray and my fiancé and my kids and Danielle Brown. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. It's a very and I'm Pika. I'm very very small. I've got pe- I don't I don't go out socialising. It, this is this is I work. I'm constantly working, constantly earning. I've come back up on top. That doesn't mean I'm going to take my foot off the pedal. No. I've got to keep grafting because I've lost it. I've been bankrupt twice. You know. I've gone from being nothing to getting my clothes off a jumble sale to becoming a millionaire to going bankrupt, bankrupt again to becoming a millionaire. What again. years were the bankruptcies? Um, two thousand. I want to say two thousand and eight. Two thousand eight, the first one. Two thousand and nine, maybe. Second one, two thousand and fifteen. And I've been out of it now for eight years. So that's all done, dusted, and become a millionaire again. Who the fuck does that? That is amazing. Who does that? You sound like an extreme workaholic. I am. You sound what, like you. What about the crazy after parties and stuff? Did you engage in any of that? What in Atomic Kitten? Yes. Oh, I never because. It was difficult because the girls were underage, like Tash had to have a chaperone. So we'd all mm. pretend we'd all pretend to go to bed. Because I was 18. I'm like, Tash, come on. Like Liz was dead she was dead good mm. how Liz was. I go, Tash, come on. I remember we went to Will Smith and Jazzy Jess Party. In fact, I was with um, Lee Francis, Keith Lemon, doing a podcast in the other week. And he was there as well when he was having Miriam. And it was like, do you remember when we was all at this Will Smith party? So that yeah, we, there was just not after parties. Like we'd all just go out and get pissed up in London. Really, not very often because again we were so busy. And you got very mad. I've got nothing wild to tell you. My wildness was when I was younger and more so when I split up with Brian, Mr. Smith. Mm. Yeah, that was as wild as it got for me. <laughs> um, yeah, we was always just busy working, but we had some we had some great times out and about. Yeah, because tabloids make you know you're a bit of a party animal. By the yeah. what I've met of you today, um, you're not really. No, they don't even drink, really. We went on holiday, I like a strawberry decorate on holiday, but back in the day, I wasn't a part... You'll never see a picture of me falling out of a nightclub. You know, but, but I had a reputation because I'm loud, I'm brass, I'm, you know, I start talking like that, you know what I mean, love? Because, <laughs> I, get, because, because I get... Because I get... I love fits nerves, and I, it, it's just a persona that I play up to as well, but... Now, as soon as you go, the lashes will be off, makeup will be off. I don't even know why I bothered putting these on, to be honest. I just didn't really know what was going on today. <laughs> so, you made it sound like after Atomic Kittens, it all just went massive. But what were the challenges during Atomic Kittens? There must have been ups and downs. The travelling. Um, we're like sisters, so you fight a lot. Like you would be sisters. So, I think for me, was a lot of it was like, you remember SMTV? Yes. And CGK. Do you remember Chums? Like, Conor McAnally, the producer, would always use me. To be a character on there, and the girls wanted it, and it, I was. I I don't. I'm not asking these newspapers to edit and put just me in it. That for me was like, you know what, this just isn't worth it. And I met Brian, fell in love, and I was like, I just want to be mum. This kind of that. That for me was the hardest. How did you meet Brian? Um. Oh fuck. <laughs> I've been married so many times since then. Can't hang on. Let me Google it. <laughs> 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 um, we was at, oh, we was at Smash It. That was it. I think it was in Brighton. So, in our car in the Chrysler, in our pickup, 
uh, Carl will be driving, or Helen it was at the time, listen to our chair, Tasha have her chair and I'd have the whole back seat. Tasha listened to Dr. Drake and R R and B. Liz in her ears would listen to Westlife and Boyzone. And I would listen to Rod Stewart and Dr. Hawk, Roy Orbison, Elvis. I was Motown. That's, you know, really old school. So we all had different types of music. So when I got into pop and I got a fucking clue who any of them were. You know, all these girls, I, I remember saying, she's like, excuse me, Lord, do you know where toilets are? And Liz was like, oh my God, that's Ben from A1. And I'm like, oh, he's A1? <laughs> I, did, I did not, I did, I did not have a clue. And then we was in this lift and I knew she liked Westlife, but I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be able to tell you any of them work. It wasn't my thing. And like, now I won't have a clue. It's only because of Atomic Kitten and I work with these people that you realise who they are. And we got out this lift and Liz was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like, I'm like what, what, what is this? Oh my God, there's Brian. I went, oh, 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 Brian in from Westlife. Oh my God, I was so excited for her. I was like, which, which, which one is it? Which one is this? Him there, him there. She's like, oh my God, oh my God. I went, right, so I went, come on, go say hi to him. No, I can't, I can't, I can't. Me be me. Excuse me, love, is your name Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Are you in Westlife? Me mate's a really big fan. Can you have a picture? And that's how I met him. And what was his approach to <laughs> Um, Oh, he stopped me. He did, yeah. He was like, and I was like, listen, love, just because you're in a boy band, don't think I'm going to be another fucking notch on your bedpost. One thing people have to understand about me is I fell in love and got married a lot. You can count, go through papers, you'll see how many people slept with it. It's mm. not a lot. I've never, because I'm bald and because I've done pastry and all that, I remember Duncan James saying to me, you know what it's like having a threesome, don't you? I went, no. Why would you... Because of people, that's what people presume that's the kind of person I am. But I, I, I'm really loyal and I fell in love and I wanted it all to happen and last forever. It just didn't work out that way. So after the stalking, did he whisk you off? <laughs> he made me laugh. If you look at all my husbands, and there's a lot, um, <laughs> none of them look alike. I haven't yeah. got a type. It's humour's a big thing for me. And Brian made me laugh so much. He was so funny. And, and that's what it was. And it went from there, really. And we sat... You don't know who Westlife are, do you? Because I was overseas for 20 years, mm. almost. I, I skipped a lot of things. Do you know who One Direction are? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Westlife was like One Direction back Honestly, then. Honestly, my first CD was... Well, it was Savage Garden. They had, the like, 13, they had like 13... They had like 13 number mm. one hits. So we, they were like huge. One Direction... Back then, yeah, that, that's what they were like. And all there. the girls would swoon over him, right? And, and like, and then, yeah. and then they, they stand up off the chairs in slow mo. <laughs> so did that cause chaos everywhere you Do went? Do you know the song "Flying Without Wings"? Flying without, without wings. wings. <laughs> and across to America. No, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. No, but well, yeah, they, they, were, they were really huge. They, they, yeah. were, they were back in. They were huge. So when I met Brian. It was it was a massive nineties. It was a pop sensation mm. thing for Kerry from Atomic Kitten and Brian from Westlife getting married. I mean, it yeah, was it was huge. Because Brian was... Harvey was disappointed because I didn't know that Christmas song you did. What Christmas song I did? Take me. What is it? Just Brian Harvey's Christmas song. Who's Can't Brian remember. Harvey? With that, that it Who's was Brian it Harvey? was massively famous. Not fair to tell you what one, but it's got a number. It's got a number. Google Brian yeah. Harvey real quick. Yeah. It's that band that was really famous when Huge. I was away, but I'd never heard of them when he was up. Brian Harvey. Well, got a number in the, in the name. A number in E17. That's it, yeah. Ah! E17. <laughs> Stay now. Stay now. <laughs> baby, you got yeah, to yeah, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, Did okay. you ever bump into Brian Harvey? No, I've never met him. Okay. okay. Yeah. He's, a lively, <laughs> he's a lively went, character. Shout out to Brian Harvey. But we went on tour with E17 without Brian Harvey oh, okay. to Australia uh, after the big reunion and all that. Where was he? He left by then, was he? I ain't got a fucking clue. I don't know who he is. I never <laughs> met him. <laughs> I know who he is. I know yeah. of him, but I don't know him. <laughs> it doesn't sound like you went through that. You you, mm -hmm. you kind of like breezed through fame. These other young people, it sounds like it really did something Struggled psychologically to them. Mass yeah, I think I was already fucked up anyway. I think because of my childhood, it helped. It actually helped my childhood. It you helped me get a mental yeah, barrier. Yeah, massively. Um, I remember getting. I, I just, just found, I just. I remember nineteen. I got put on antidepressants while I was in Atomic Kitten. Um, but I, I had struggles from my, from my home. You see, so. 
it was our being in the industry and trying to deal with the shit that was going on at home and oh my god please i've got to deal with this and then i've got to go on live television i never forget what i was doing i was doing something and something had happened with me and my mom and then i had to go on tv and go hi ah, you know you know my god i got to deal with this and i get off so you become very used to doing shit like that mm. do you think your need for a family then come from my childhood yes massively that's all i wanted i wanted to be a mom and a wife and i wanted to say wait till your dad gets home you know get mm -hmm. your own work done and have a father around so i know my choices have been because of my childhood. I forced it on my children that they needed it, their dad in their lives. So I had to get remarried and have another kid and keep trying to do the same thing over and over, over again because it was my dream, not theirs. And it took me to the age of 36 to realise I'm more than enough for my kids. I've been with Ryan now for over four years and I'm not married, <laughs> no kids, and so divorce lawyer in sight, Fantastic. doing something different. I mean, Brian proposed to me after three weeks. Three weeks? That's how good I am in bed. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about having this normal family life. Like, we're in a relationship with someone like Brian McFadden, you were mm. hardly going to get that. I mean, how did but you it wasn't, and But to down? you, it's Brian McFadden, but to me, just I just met him. Do you know what I mean? And he made me laugh. And it was a very normal life. When we come on, like, make the kids in the garden picking out fucking frogs. Do you know what I mean? It is a norm. The, when, when I'm at home, there was nothing. When me and Brian was at home, when he was at home, I mean, I was a golf widow, you know, he was golf mad. So when he wasn't on tour, he was, you know, it was just, I mean, that marriage was doomed before it was bloody over. Do you know what I mean? It was. It was just a normal life. It was when you go out. It's how the people sensationalise it. Cameras and all yeah, so if you go to events, but we was never really paps in Ireland like that. When I came home to England was when it was just I've never experienced it like it ever. When we split up, I've never because I lived in Ireland and I had to come back home to England because I had nothing there. So I moved home to England and that was when it was like fuck. I've never seen anything like it. Sleeping outside my house like. 40 pack. It was. Just, I mean, when I lived in Wimslow, I lived on a corner, and it's on my MTV show, and you'll see the packs just sat there waiting. It. I've never. It was mad madness. I've never experienced anything like that. That was just crazy. Do you want Everywhere to went. Be able to explain to Sean the sort of story behind that? Oh right, yeah. Yeah, he's a um, wiser. So, oh, it's quite refreshing this actually. <laughs> so I, me and Brian McFadden, and he was in his massive boy band. I was in a massive girl band. We just got number one with Hole again, and I left. I did. I didn't. I didn't want to do it. I got pregnant with Molly. I was only twenty, um, and I thought that's it. So I had Molly, and then we. I moved to Ireland. I gave my career up. Gave it all up because I just wanted to be a wife. Obviously, but I'm still married to a Westlifer. So it's like being married to. Um, what what the One Directions like Harry Styles? Like being married to Harry Styles or yeah. something like that. Ooh. That that's that's what it was like back then in the early noughties. I mean, it was huge, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, our wedding was pathetic. I mean, I got a blessing off the Pope. And Mariah Carey <laughs> sent us wedding pictures, like wedding frame pictures. <laughs> what a lot of fucking good that did. Because <laughs> <laughs> Westlife performed for the Pope, a private thing. And obviously being Irish, Catholics, the parents, like, oh my God. So I went, but I didn't go to watch. I, I went to Pedro Pio's house, I was pregnant. And then the second man in command of the Pope was in the airport, not randomly, he was surrounded by all this press. And their tour manager was Irish, grabbed him and he bust me belly. And then as we stood at the altar, he goes, and we've got a blessing from the Pope himself. Like I say, what a fucking good that did. That's why I'm not a Catholic. <laughs> of course, um, yeah. But we had, he had a stag do, Brian. See where this is going? Mm -hmm. So four months before we got married, he had a stag do. Uh, no, a month before, and four months after we were married, I was doing a TV show called A Limited Day. I was in the Bahamas or Barbados filming. I had his mum with me, I had my mum with me, I had Molly with me, and my friend was flying out. We're flying to Vegas after I was doing this film I was doing. And as around, she went, Are you alright? I was like, Yeah, well, I was like, The papers and Brian said, What? I said, Let me go. That's all she said. I rang our and her up. And she went, I'm so sorry. I said, What's happened? And he slept with a girl and he paid a 15 grand key for mouth shut up fucking hell i can blow job i only get a pair of new shoes <laughs> <laughs> she gets 15 grand do you know what i mean <laughs> um and i was absolutely 
devastated and the way he made it out to me was like I was one going crazy and he was denying it and denying it anyway it came out and it was all true but I was like why did you make a sign summit you shouldn't have done that and so that was evidence of yeah it. anyway I got compassionate leave for 48 hours so I flew from the Bahamas or Barbados I think it was the Bahamas to Manchester got picked up by their tour manager because I was on tour and drove to Newcastle. I was absolutely shattered to talk, and he was in concert. And Lou Walsh is going to me, "Whatever you do, Kerry, just don't hit him in the face because the Americans are here. We're trying to get this deal. Hit him in the fucking face, Lou, yeah. and you knew about this. And none of it, all the Westlife boys were dead scared." <laughs> <laughs> and it was so funny because we had, on the way down I had a great laugh with Paul Higgins. He was also One Direction tour manager. Mm. So Paul Higgins is a huge tour manager in the industry, and we're having a laugh down. And he was like, "Kerry, just don't hit him or anything." I said, it's him. So wait till I get there. And as he checked me into my room, I shit you not, it was a baseball theme room. So I had all baseball bats all over. I mean, oh. Paul, I just, but even though I was heartbroken, we couldn't help but laugh because Brian's on stage at this point, still not seeing him. And I've walked in, it's like a, a it was a, a baseball theme. It was like the hotel people knew what I was going to do. <laughs> they were helping me. They were like, what a twat. <laughs> you can get him, Kerry. And it, and for me, obviously, he wanted to save the marriage. But I remember saying to him, "I'm so laid back. I love girls screaming at you. It, it was it's a turn on when someone's successful like that." And he was so nice to see. And I never wanted to know where he was or anything like that. We spoke all the time on the phone. I said, "I'm going to resent you because I'm going to want to know who you're with, who you're texting, where you got." And that's not me. And I'm, I'm going to hate. And that basically what happened. And he just ruined it in the end. And then he met Delta Goodra. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I just knew. Do you know who she is? She's an no. uh, uh, Australian sweetheart. She was a neighbour. She's huge. Right? She's mm. absolute drug big God. I mean, I'd leave me for her too. <laughs> Honestly, when I met her, I, it was heartbreaking. There was a holding hands. I was devastated. I just knew. But I knew. I just knew. I knew anyway. And that was that. But it wasn't meant to be because look how all these kids have got now. Exactly. So did you have exactly. a big conversation with him? No, he rang me up and told me on the phone he wanted a divorce. Oh, he couldn't even face you then. No, I, I, see, me and Brian would speak about eleven times a day on the phone all the time, and I was filming a TV show in England called A Little Help for My Friends. Brian left Westlife, and when he was leaving, it was on Sky News, so they had a big press call. That's how big Westlife were, right? That I'm, I'm so like, cry. It was huge. Like people wanted there were suicide lines, all kinds of shit. It's like when Robbie left, take that. that that's yeah, how big. That's news. how big they were. It, it was news. ridiculous. You know, and um, I remember him saying, I'm, I'm leaving, I want to spend more time with my wife and my kids. We dad, we got pregnant with Lily. Uh, I was like, I don't even know what to say, we married too, let alone have another baby. If that's Lily, you met, thank God I kept her. Uh, yeah, and um, he was leaving my life to spend more time with his family. As soon as the press call was over, he went straight to the studio to record his single, his solo album. I never saw him really. Um, and then, yeah, and then he met, he was doing a duet with Delta on it. And um, they always still deny it was not fair, but you, everyone knew, we all knew. How did you regroup from that? I just took loads of drugs. <laughs> Honestly, I, just, I think I came back over to England and Brian was my knight in shining armour. So I was still living in the council, my mum had a one bedroom council flat, rough as fuck, I'm not like heroin addicts, all kind of, it was really rough where I lived. All the way through Atomic Kitten, I could literally sleep in bed with my mum. Because uh, I had nowhere, and when I moved, when I met Brian, I got pregnant. That was it. I was moving to Ireland, so I bought me one with Terry's house. So he was my knight in shining armor. He got me away from my mum, and I love my mum. I love my mum to bits. Got me away from my mum. Got away from all the drugs, and, and that was it. But then when I had to come back, you lie down with dogs, especially dirty ones. What you're gonna get? Fleas. <laughs> exactly. That's what you're gonna get. And so rather than, and I'll never forget being in my mum's and the amount of paparazzi it was outside my mum's house on like it's like a Coronation Street. You know what the house is like round, not round here, but in Warrington. That's what that's what it was like. And I just remember going, and I went, and was like, oh my god, I can't handle this. And I was like, you all right? So no one's like going, Kerry, you all right? And and rather than grieving, I just it, it was coke, just coke number. So is that the pattern throughout your life? Whenever that goal of having that f ideal family is shattered, mm. okay. fall back on no. drugs? No. No. no, 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 not such drugs in 13 years. Brilliant. Yeah, 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 well so with, so it was Brian. That yeah. was, It wasn't yeah. Brian's fault by no means the situation, it was how I handled it. Mm. And the people you surround yourself with, that is how it happens. Yeah.